Sharks are one of the most remarkable groups of animals to ever swim in this planet. A group so ancient, they have family ties older than the dinosaurs. In fact, older than most life itself. Evolving into a vast variety of species, each one filling different roles in their respective ecosystems. The most famous of these roles are, of course, top predators, filled by swift and powerful carnivores like the Great White of today, one of the greatest predators ever known to man. However, this status of apex predator isn't a recent role in the shark's history. In fact, many sharks have occupied this role in Earth's oceans for millions of years. One in particular bore a passing resemblance to its distant great white relative. It roamed the western interior sea during the time of the dinosaurs, a massive shark that swam in a sea of monsters, called Cretoxyrhina, the Ginsu shark. Cretoxyrhina earned its name as the Ginsu shark for good reason, thanks to the two-inch Ginsu knife-like teeth that adorned its jaws. And with these teeth, it could slice flesh into bite-sized chunks as it fed, and with size estimates ranging from 25 to 26 feet, making it larger than a great white shark, Cretoxyrhina was not to be taken lightly. This Cretaceous era shark was discovered in 1858 by English paleontologist Gideon Mantell, mistaking them for modern shark teeth. Upon further analysis by Swiss naturalist Louise Agassiz, Agassiz, Agassiz I butchered that, I'm sorry. The teeth were correctly identified as those belonging to a more ancient shark, and in the later 19th century, they were officially given the name Cretoxyrhina mantelli, meaning Mantel's Cretaceous Shark Nose. Since then, scores of Cretoxyrhina species have been found all over the world, from scattered remains across Europe, from teeth and vertebrae reaching as far away as South America. However, the most significant discoveries are from North America particularly the American Midwest, which during the time of the Cretoxyrhina, was submerged under a shallow sea that split the continent in two, called the Western Interior Sea. It's thanks to these discoveries that we know quite a bit about Cretoxyrhina, particularly what it ate, which, to put things simply, was anything and everything. Fish, turtles, plesiosaurs, and other marine reptiles were on this shark's menu. Several Ginsu shark's teeth have been found in association with other marine organisms, from scattered teeth around carcasses, to being embedded in the bones of these animals. One curious case of this instance was discovered on an unlikely victim, a pterosaur, specifically a pteranodon. A discovery published in 2018 revealed a Cretoxyrhina's tooth embedded in a pteranodon's vertebrae, indicating that the shark's diet was not only limited to the dwellers of the deep, but the rulers of the air as well. We don't know if the pteranodon was a victim of predation or just a scavenged corpse, but it's nevertheless an interesting addition to this shark's diet, and given how Cretoxyrhina was in picky, it would have gone after these flying reptiles regardless, likely while they were sitting on the water while at sea, similar to how tiger sharks will prey on seabirds in our oceans today. Another exciting addition to the diets of these sharks are an unexpected and extraordinary find to say the least. Thanks to several dinosaur bones featuring Cretoxyrhina in association with their remains, including teeth embedded in predigested bones, we know that these sharks also fed on dinosaurs. So you might be thinking, oh cool, they took down dinosaurs. Well, reality is often disappointing. Evidence indicates that while Cretoxyrhina did feed on these animals, it was likely attributed to scavenging, feeding on the corpses as they washed out to sea. That said, Cretoxyrhina faced far more ferocious foes out in open waters, such as the monstrous mosasaurs, ancient relatives of modern monitor lizards that ruled the ancient Cretaceous seas, a spot they shared with Cretoxyrhina, with evidence to show that it wasn't quite a peaceful existence. With several mosasaurs, such as Platycarpus, having been found with Ginsu shark teeth embedded in their bones as well. That said, that doesn't mean Cretoxyrhina wasn't on the Mosasaurus menu either, considering it shared its environment with 40-foot leviathans like Tylosaurus, one of the largest Mosasaurus ever known, and would have likely made Cretoxyrhina a snack if the opportunity presented itself. 
However, a shark's ability to kill isn't what makes it special, but its place in the ecosystem and the role it plays. Sharks aren't just mindless eating machines, they're living, thinking animals that have their own place in the environment. As top predators, Cretoxia rhino is key in maintaining the balance in their ecosystems, taking up a similar role as the modern great white and other carnivorous sharks, keeping prey populations under control while keeping the oceans clean of carrion and unwanted biomatter. And it's important to understand that sharks like great whites or Cretoxia rhina aren't just mindless killers, but keystone species that help maintain our oceans. But that isn't the only thing that makes Cretoxia rhina so special. A key aspect among their fossils that make them stand out amongst other fossil sharks, the preservation of skeletons. Due to shark skeletons being made of cartilage and not bone, they're extremely hard to fossilize. And the fact that we've been fortunate enough to receive not only bones, but whole skeletons is truly something special. The first of which was discovered by Charles H. Sternberg, a fossil collector and paleontologist whose contributions to paleontology include many findings revolving around the western interior seaway. From these skeletal remains, we get a much clearer understanding of what this shark truly looked like, and where it sits on the shark family tree. Based on its anatomy, we can identify it as a mackerel shark, the same group containing great whites, makos, basking sharks, threshers, and goblin sharks, albeit very distantly related only sharing traits to modern great whites and threshers as a result of evolving similar traits to suit a similar niche. However, this convergence has also sparked a bit of debate on how the shark looked in life. Cretoxy rhina is typically depicted as a large great white shark, and rightfully so, sharing several convergent traits with their modern counterparts, while carrying slightly more bulk on their bodies. However, there are also several factors that call this depiction into question, particularly the large eyes in proportion to its head and its proportionately long tail fin, into sharks having very large eyes similar to those of thresher sharks, which have caused some scientists to consider the possibility of Cretoxyrhina being closer in appearance to modern threshers. However, based on the overall skeletal structure, this is a bit unlikely. Others have suggested it was part of an extended line of mako sharks, but this hypothesis has been met with much scrutiny due to researchers of the study failing to cite significant pieces of data. The skeletal remains of Cretoxia rhina not only tell us its relations though, but of course provide significant pieces of data regarding their biology. A fascinating aspect of Ginsu shark biology provided by these skeletons is actually their growth rate in aging. Like all mackerel sharks, Cretoxyrhina had growth rings in their vertebrae. It is thanks to these growth rings that we not only have an understanding of how fast these animals could grow, but how old these animals were when they died, not only providing a growth rate, but a potential lifespan. A study in 2008 by Dr. Kensu Shimada measured the growth rings in various Cretoxyrhina specimens, while also looking at the space between those rings. From there, he studied an erratic growth pattern. It would seem that the Ginsu sharks start out at a very rapid growth at the first two years, but at three years, it started to become slower and more gradual as they gain more size. Based on the average amount of rings, he determined that the average lifespan of Cretoxy rhino was 26 to 30 years. However, re-measurements in 2013 and 2019 have placed it more towards 19 to 21 years. Another aspect that the skeletal remains show is the shark's ability to move, with evidence indicating that these sharks were incredibly fast despite their bulk. Thanks to the shark mummy remains, we can see perfect adaptations for a very hydrodynamic predator, with placoid scales reducing drag in the water, and a large body propelled by what is known as a type 4 tail. A study in 2017 estimated that Ginsu sharks could reach cruising speeds of 8 miles per hour while being able to burst into top speeds of 70 miles per hour, potentially making the Ginsu shark one of the fastest sharks to ever live. Sadly, Cretoxyrhina rhina wasn't fast enough to outspeed extinction, with Cretoxyrhina's rhina's extinction coinciding with the increased number of large mosasaurs in Earth's oceans and shallow seas. The last of the Ginsu sharks went extinct around 75 to 73 million years ago only 10 million years before the dinosaurs met their end at the twilight of the Cretaceous. While Cretoxyrhina may not be stalking our oceans today, 
its lineage continues to carry on its vicious legacy. Be it prowling the waters as top predators, or keeping the oceans clean of unwanted carrion. It's sharks like these that have certainly taken a bite out of our natural history.